Uh, hey guys, um, this is a playthrough of Submarine Commander. This has been a long time coming to be honest. I recorded this ages ago but couldn't really work out how I was going to put it up because there's times in this playthrough where I get lost and spend a lot of time sort of trawling the sea and even if you're a diehard Let's Play fan or, or whatever you want to call yourself, watching someone go around a green screen sea is pretty damn boring. So I was going to try and do this sort of caption to the bottom of the screen but uh, it didn't really work. I tried a couple of times. So I'm going to try a sort of minimalist commentary. Um, I'm not the best at on the fly commentary but uh, hopefully I don't bore you to death. Um, and if this is your first time watching a submarine command playthrough then uh, enjoy. <laughs> Okay, well that was the intro. Um, so what we basically gather from that is we screwed up a bit and the ice caps melted, the ozone layer did whatever really and the only people that are around are people in submarines. Um, you'll notice spelling mistakes throughout this game as well so keep an eye on them, they're actually quite amusing. Um, this first mission that we're about to do is obviously pretty straightforward being the first mission. You don't have an awful lot of control over everything Yes, a sort of structured tutorial mission which I'm quite grateful for because I don't have the manual for this. Um, but let's create a file and let's get on with it.
Okay, and yes, as you've no doubt gathered, you are captain captain of this vessel. Um, I think you pronounce it Sayachi, Saichi, Sayachi. We're gonna go with Sayachi for this playthrough. Um, as I said, you don't have much control over what happens. It does tell you how to control the ship, at least, which is useful because this is a really unique and quite complex control system. Now, where we are now, this is the sea. I think it should be blue, but it's green in this game nonetheless. Um, and we're really just following the tutorial controls. After this, uh, it really does leave you on your own. It's taught you the controls, and that's all you really need. It shows you quite a few things here that the ship can do, but to be honest, after you've played a couple of levels, you only end up using a couple of the bits and bobs, namely the wave sonar, which you're introduced to in just a moment. There's also the little squares you see on the radar. I believe those are supposed to be pieces of debris. If you, um, once you identify them, which we'll go into in a minute, a lot of them just seem to be big... Um, sort of squares of metal I think uh, until you fire a sonar directly at them then you normally end up being things like shoals of fish in most levels at least for the first half of the game there's only ever one target which you which you chase you find your first enemy here which ends up being a, a slightly bigger threat a little later on but um, more on that as and when we get to it now, as I said at the beginning there will be times not for the first few levels definitely but um, there are a few levels later where I went into battle quite under-equipped and ended up chasing submarines far faster than mine um, for a long, long, long time. For those bits, I'm going to edit the footage. I don't know if I'm supposed to do that being a playthrough, but it's not interesting. I, I couldn't crack jokes for 15, 20 minutes. It just wouldn't make sense. But anyway, what it's trying to show me now, well, what it's trying to show you now, is how to use the wide beam sonar. What the wide beam sonar basically does is every time you deploy it, that little arrow appears in the bottom right of the screen, trying to indicate where your target is. Once you've got the direction of the target, you switch your sonar to beam mode, which fires a much more concentrated uh, sonar beam, but it shows you at what sort of target you're firing at. Um, <clears throat> sort of shooting things isn't just a case of, of loading and shooting. You have to um, load the torpedoes, each one separately, which I did do a little bit quicker earlier, but I'm sure I'll do it a bit slower at some point. And um, you open up, well, you put each torpedo in, wait for it to load, then you open up each hatch, and then you can shoot. Just like that. So I'm loading, even though I've just shot, but it shows you in sort of real time where your torpedoes have gone. So uh, the reason, the way I knew that submarine was there is with the beam sonar, it marked my target, I just shot in his direction. Being the first enemy, it's quite a slow submarine you're knocking out of the sea. Uh, later on, they have all kinds of uh, weird and wonderful ways of avoiding fire. This one's dead easy, though, of course, it's just been the first mission, and I've annoyed this fella. And there we go. Short, sweet, that's the first mission. Uh, really, as I said, just get, getting you used to the controls. After each mission, you um, end up at a place where we're going to now, uh, a place called Plant 9. Um, throughout the game, this is your base of operations. It's a small settlement in the sea. Uh, and you take orders from the commander of this area. Um, I think they call her Harbour Master. Oh, not Harbour Master, but we'll see in a minute.
and here we go. This is plant nine. The way I've done this as well, I've split each video, so when we get to the end and I save, is where the video will end. Um, any sort of uh, movement of the story will normally be at the beginning of each mission, as there's not normally an awful lot of waffle after each mission. And anyway, yeah, that was the first mission. Um, like I said, I am going to try and keep my commentary to a minimum. I want to let the game tell the story. Just make sure when you're watching this, you keep an eye on the story as it's going on. Because it ends up being really in-depth. And it's, it is all quite interesting, really. It's, it's really great how the story pans out on this one. Anyway, I hope I didn't bore you guys too much. Thanks for watching.